Assalamu alaikum and good morning. Welcome to the morning Baraka home. It's Friday morning, Soho time, and it's the first Ramadan edition of Morning Baraka. I'm super excited and really looking forward to the holy month and the blessings it bestows upon us. It's been a great start to the holy month for Ramadan, and alhamdulillah, so much to look forward to. So excited. Absolutely, and mashallah, the blessings multiplies. Imam Hussein TV are bringing Baraka to your homes during Soho time where it has been narrated that there are so many blessings when it comes to the nights of Ramadan, alhamdulillah. Yeah, that's right, uh, Zara. The Holy Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him and his family, has said that Ramadan is Allah's month, subhanAllah. This really is the month to gain blessings and rewards. Let's get on that Barakah train and see what we have in store for you today. Mustafa Ali is in the studio with the Holy Quran recitations from Surah al -Bah. MashaAllah. And we also have Brother Ibrahim Ansari on the couch with the daily du'as. And this morning's du'a is to prepare us for the beginning of the Blessed Month of Ramadan. We also have Sister Dua with spiritual upliftment from the Holy Quran and how to benefit from the Holy Quran in our daily lives. It sounds like it would be amazing. I'm sure it will be, inshallah. I'm looking forward to that. And today, Brother Dua will also be finding out the nutritional benefits of food on our mental health from life coach and NLP practitioner Fahima Muhammad and we also have our very own chef Ben in the studio and something to make and it's going to have related around dates. Yes that's Delicious. right Ben will be here. Yes indeed Zara there's numerous hadiths about the wonders of dates so do stay tuned inshallah we have Sister Masuma Jaffa with Ramadan etiquette and today's topic is all about Ramadan preparations something that we should all be concerned about and also we all benefit from too. Definitely and so much wisdom from Sister Masumo, I'm looking forward to that and even more than that just can't wait for a little bus, the cutie, um, bless him, he's stayed up late so far and he's going to deliver the daily hadith. He's going to deliver it for us, mashallah, he's so cute, uh, bless him, it's a fantastic show coming up for you this morning and just before morning here okay, we have our very own side Mosin Shah with Akam SOS, he'll be here on the couch, your questions and queries will be addressed. I can't wait to see it. And the topic this morning is children and fasting. So parents, keep an eye on that one. Right now, it's time for our morning Baraka competition details. You and a friend could win the chance to visit Imam Hussein and Abul Fazl Abbas. Peace and blessings be upon them for July 2018. For the competition details, stay tuned for Brother Ahmed. the chance to visit Imam al Hussein and Al Fadl Abbas, peace be upon them both, well you've come to the right place. Morning Barakah is giving away two free tickets to Karbala this July 2018. I am standing here with the Holy Shrine of Imam al Hussein salam, behind me to give you the chance to send your salutations to the Imam in person. The exclusive Morning Barakah competition is the chance for you and a friend to visit the Holy Shrine of Imam al Hussein. For your chance to win, answer the following question. Name two names given to the Holy Land of Karbala in Iraq. We need your emails with your answer and details which include a telephone number, phone name and address. Entries are free of charge and closed by the 30th of June 2018. All entries after may not be accepted so please put your entries in before the deadline. To enter, you must be over the age of 18. Right now it's time for my favorite part of the show, the part where we hear the Holy Quran being recited by our brother Mustafa Ali. I'm very much looking forward to this one. Absolutely. Really looking forward. It will be a real treat in these holy nights indeed, um, indeed. to be hearing the Quran from brother Mustafa. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Wa alaikum welcome. Assalamu. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Alhamdulillah. How about yourself? Good. Alhamdulillah. Good, good, good. good. So inshallah you'll be reciting Surah Al-Baqarah verses 183 to 186 today for us. Inshallah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا Bye. 
قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ أَيَّامًا مَعْدُودًا فَمَن كَانَ مِنكُم مَّرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِّنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرَ وَعَلَى الَّذِينَ يطيقونه فدية طعام مسكين فمن تطوع خيرا فهو خير له صوموا خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون شهر رمضان الذي فَمَن شَهِدَ مِنكُم الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَصُمْ وَمَن كَانَ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرَ يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي ص
MashaAllah, that's a very, very, very beautiful recitation of the Holy Quran by uh, Brother Mustafa Ali. Um, it's just so nice to hear the Quran Absolutely. being recited in the holy month. Um, it's, it's very um, soothing for the soul, I indeed, think. Indeed, indeed. And we're looking forward to hearing from um, Brother Ibrahim with, with these duas. Uh, Salaam alaikum, brother. Good to see you. How are you doing, sir? Good to see you. Alhamdulillah, how are you? Alhamdulillah. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And Our we're pleasure. looking forward to this segment as well, where you're going to be talking about the duas um, in the holy sure. month. Um, so today's one we're going to discuss is du'a for the beginning of the holy month of Shahar Ramadan. Yes, inshallah. Um, so would you like to talk us through um, the du'a and you know the time? Most definitely, inshallah. Um, one beautiful thing, generally, du'as, it's just that you calling upon God, having conversation with God, and beautiful way to start the month of God, the month of Allah, is through a du'a. So there's this du'a which is recommended to mm -hmm. be reciting and to be recited sorry in the beginning of the month and in this dua we have of course duas mentioned in Mafatiha Jinan the book we have of duas mm -hmm. and uh, it talks about the beginning of Ramadan and what Ramadan is so it's the month in which the Quran was revealed and at the end of it it it's us seeking Allah to help us in observing the fast of this beautiful month so if I may recite it inshallah <coughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم إنه قد دخل شهر رمضان اللهم رب شهر رمضان الذي أنزلت فيه القرآن وجعلته بينات من الهدى والفرقان اللهم فبارك لنا في شهر رمضان وعنا على صيامه وصلواته وتقبله منا وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين so inshallah with the meaning for those who are not um, yes. familiar with Arabic um, what's the gist of the dua what's so it starts off with oh Allah the month of Ramadan Ramadan has entered oh Allah the Lord of the month of Ramadan in which he have revealed the Quran of course that is based on the Quranic ayah Shahr Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran in which the Quran was revealed making it a guidance, a guidance to the people and a clear proof so O oh Allah please bless us in this month and help us observe in fasting and offering prayers in it and accept from us see this, 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 last, this last part of this mm -hmm. dua I think mm -hmm. is very beautiful mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. accept from us accept these, these a'mal that we're doing towards you so that's the general translation the gist of the dua i think you're right because i think that last bit is what really um strikes that we can do amals we could do lots of recitations um but it's the acceptance isn't it Definitely. from allah that is so crucial that we Definitely. shouldn't just assume that we are doing all this abada and and it's accepted well wow look at me i'm doing all this yeah but actually it's it's the barakah of allah's acceptance towards us isn't it definitely and you know what is it's with um dua in general and i believe um the month of Ramadan, the month of, of Dua and that a promise that is given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran Ad'uni astajib lakum Call upon me, I will answer you It's a promise that is given from, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala But of course, this promise is to, be, is to be granted if it's done in the correct way So it's not, yeah. it's, it's not a thing of... For example, uh, one thing we do know is many of our brothers and sisters right now are sitting exams Shahr Ramadan mm -hmm. and uh, GCSE exams, A levels, even university exams. Tough time for the youngsters. Tough yeah. times, yeah. Very, yeah, very yeah. tough time. Now, a lot of them, they might be sitting back, saying, "Oh Allah, I'm fasting. Do you know what? Let, let me let me get some good grades, and then they don't end up getting anything." Now, there's a problem there, because yes, Allah has promised you to um, to accept your du'a, but He wants to see that um, that amal from you. He wants yeah. you to see work towards it. A very beautiful story, if I may mention. Mm. Uh, and I love mentioning this always. Mary, the mother of Jesus, 
three Ilisa. days, no food, no mm -hmm. drinking. She's pregnant with Isa alayhi wa ala nabina wa alayhi wa salatu wa salam. Now, where does she turn to? She turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless her with some nutrition. Now, in the narrations we have, it mentions that by that palm tree that she was, the dates never just mm. came down straight away. No, she was asked to push the palm tree. Now, I don't know, I, I come from Iraq, I'm, I'm not very sure about your backgrounds, but a palm tree, if you've seen it, yeah. and tried it's to... It's not easily it, pushable. Yeah, yeah. 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 She's a pregnant lady in her last days. Or, there you, you know, go, it's, it's, she's, she's weak. She's trimester, weak. last trimester. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, not easy, not easy. Yeah, so, yeah. impossible for her to shake yeah. it, definitely. So the narrations that we have is that say, is she put her hand on this palm tree. By just putting her hand on it, the day started falling down upon her. So it just shows that Amal, um, yeah. working towards action, it, yes. action, 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 yes, action. Definitely. The effort, mm -hmm. isn't it, as mm -hmm. well? The effort and the, yeah. you know, you have to take that first step and then Allah will obviously reward you. Um. Definitely, 100%. Uh, narration we have from Imam Ali, if I can remember it correctly, he says, bila amal, karami bila So the, ones who, the one who does uh, dua without any action is like the one who tries to to shoot without an arrow. Mm. So of course, uh, <laughs> with, the, with the bow and arrow, mm. you can't shoot if you don't have an mm. arrow. Mm. Mm. What are you shooting? You're not really shooting anything. No. So it's a very beautiful narration. bila amal karami bila sahan. And it just shows the importance of working towards what you are what you are truly asking for. Mm. So with, with this thought, um, obviously the night comes, um, 30th Sha'ban, um, 29th Sha'ban, and then the, the holy month of Ramadan is upon us. Um, is that the best time to recite this? Um, at, or is it Sahur? When is the best time to welcome this month, this du'a? Generally, generally, any du'a is beautiful to be recited at any time. There's, there is istihbab, of course, of reciting it. Even, let's take it as an example. I know this is not just mustahab in Ramadan, but du'a kumail as an example. Yeah, yeah. Du'a kumail, we have in the narration, it's mustahab to recite every single day. Yeah. And then he says, if it is difficult upon you to recite it every, every single day, then recite it once a week. Yeah. If it is difficult, then recite it once a month. Yeah. If it is difficult, and the narration goes on. So generally du'as, yes, they have that specific istihbab, that specific recommendation. However, they're beautiful at any time. However, since the general gist of this du'a is asking Allah to grant you tawfiq mm. in fasting, I think this tawfiq that you're asking for isn't just in the start of Ramadan. Because we all know that as, as we go through the month of Ramadan, we see we're going to find difficulties. Yes. We're going to find, for we're sure. still going to need that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. During the month of Ramadan, we're doing a'mal every single day. We want that, that last part, accept from us. We want that during every single day. Mm -hmm. definitely. So definitely to recite it during every single day is proof. And if you realize, it's very short as well. Yes. Like even with me reciting it slowly, it didn't take a minute. Yeah. So um, I remember in, um, I was in one year in um, Najaf, yeah. um, Imam Ali Shrine, and we were approaching... Um, um, the, this holy month of Ramadan, and they had started to have this on the loudspeakers, the, the, the du'a playing. Beautiful. It was so beautiful, and you wish that you know that tawfiq to actually spend the nights in yeah. um, Najaf to be, you know, to welcome the day, days 100%. in, um, and bless those people who are there, and inshallah they remember us in their du'as. But inshallah. this is it; just gives you that feeling, even you know, as you're reciting that, that feeling of you know, um, you're in such a blessed month that Allah mm. is showering His mercy upon you. Um, and you know, for us to take that opportunity. So, in, in as you'd say, like in terms of, is it we have, Quran is obviously you know it's revealed in this holy yeah. month. It has its blessings. You know, there's so many. What about du'a though? What would you say is the importance of reciting du'as in this holy month? Du'as in general is seeking closeness to Allah. For sure, it's, it's been building that relationship with Allah yeah. Subhanahu wa Taala. It's direct conversation. Yeah. The same way we're having conversation. Yeah. This is me having conversation with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Oh Allah, I ask you. You're, you're, you're directly asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only that, the month of Ramadan has been made such a blessed month by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in which Allah has chosen it to be the best of days, the best of nights. And we see that in the khutbah of the Prophet in welcoming the month of Ramadan. He says, إِنَّهُ قَدْ أَقْبَلَ شَهْرُ Ramadan." The month of Ramadan has, has approached us. بِالْبَرَكَ وَالرَّحْمَةِ وَالْمَغْفِرَةِ With what? has approached us with mercy. Mercy, mercy. Has mercy. approached us with mercy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now let's take this chance as a mercy. We, we, mercy is coming upon, it's coming towards us. Let's take it, let's grab it. Let's, let's talk to Allah. Oh Allah, show us with more mercy, give me more. Of course, us as, as a servant, um, we'd always, we're always lacking that, something. We can never say, oh, I have, I have complete, I'm, I'm fine. 
No, and Islam is a religion of mercy. It Islam is, is a religion of mercy. Definitely. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have not sent you but as a mercy to mankind. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the Quran it mentions beautifully. But in this khutbah, it mentions, it mentions a few very beautiful parts, if I may go through them very quickly. Um, he says, the Prophet ﷺ, شَهْرٌ هُوَ عَنْدَ اللَّهِ أَفْضَلُ الشُّهُرُ A month. By Allah, it is the best of months. وَأَيَّامُهُ أَفْضَلُ الْأَيَّامِ And his days are the best of days. وَلَيَالِيهِ أَفْضَلُ الْلَيَالِ And the nights are the best of nights. وَسَاعَاتُهُ أَفْضَلُ السَّاعَاتِ Not only days and nights, no. The hours are the best of hours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. هُوَ شَهْرٌ دُعِيتُمْ فِيهِ إِلَى ضِيَافَةِ اللَّهِ And I think this is very beautiful. Mm -hmm. A month in which you have been invited to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To a banquet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. a spiritual banquet, yeah, yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, come, this, this, this yeah. is, this is as, as you mentioned, the banquet. Here, welcome. And then it says, وَجَعُلْتُمْ فِيهِ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكَرَامَةِ and فَاسُكُمْ فِيهِ تَسْبِيح This is the blessing of Ramadan. Your breathing is tasbih. So us, while we're fasting, just by breathing in and out, which is just a normal action, we are gaining thawab from it. وَنَوْمُكُمْ فِيهِ عِبَادَةً Sleeping in it is ibadah. وَعَمَلُكُمْ فِيهِ مَقْبُولٍ And your actions in it is, are accepted. Mm -hmm. But of course, like we mentioned earlier, yeah. we have to work towards the acceptance. وَدُعَاءُكُمْ فِيهِ مُسْتَجَابٍ this is, this is the part that we're talking about. Yeah. And your dua in it is mustajab. It is accepted. It is answered. فَاسْأَلُوا اللَّهِ رَبُّكُمْ بِنِيَّاتٍ صَادِقَةٍ So ask Allah, your Lord, with pure intentions. Again, focusing on, on what we mentioned wow. earlier. We, we must approach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with pure intentions. وَقُلُوبٍ طَاهِرَةٍ And clean hearts, purified hearts. أَنْ يُوَفِّقَكُمْ لِصِيَامِهِ To grant you tawfiq for fasting the month of Ramadan. Wow. Because That's without so, it, we, so we, we can't. Without this tawfiq so from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we see many times the month of Ramadan approaches. Sometimes it's not in our hands. We, we fall ill. Yeah. We can't fast. Yeah. It, yeah. Is, it is a true tawfiq that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has definitely blessed us. Definitely give us tawfiq, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. Sorry, we have run out no, of thank time Thank you very much. Morning. That was very nice to us. Thank, thank you so you much. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. You shared so much beautiful wisdom there. And inshallah, we have opportunity more. Jazakumullah Allah khair. blesses us and we, have, we meet again, inshallah, another thank morning. Thank you very much, inshallah. Um, up next, we have um, Baraka Pearls with Dua Maksumi. Assalamu alaikum. I am Dua Maksumi and I'm here to show you the Holy Quran and how it can improve your life. Do you find it difficult preparing for the holy month of Ramadan? Do you wish that you could gain more from the holy month of Ramadan? Do you wish that you could gain more from the beginning of the holy month of Ramadan on spiritual level? Do you know that reading and reciting the holy Quran can make a huge impact? The preparation process for the holy month is very important because it, this month is full with blessings and mercy that showers upon a Muslim from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, in order to increase your fair share in the feast of blessings and mercy, try preparing for the month of Ramadan beforehand so that the transition remains easy for you and you make the most out of it. So what should you be doing? Well, in Mafatih Jinan, there are daily prayers and supplications and du'as that are recommended for us to read day by day in the holy month of Ramadan. Those du'as and prayers are specifically for this holy month that can help build your spiritual soul. Erase all your sins. In a matter of fact, each specific prayer and supplication has its own special benefits. For example, Imam Ali salam says, He who prays the first night the first day, the first night of the month of Ramadan, four rak'at, in the first verse he reads Alhamdu, and 15 times Surah Al-Ikhlas, Allah will give them thawab al-shuhada, which are the benefits of dying as a martyrdom, and he will erase their sins, and in the day of judgment, you will be rescued. What better can you ask more than that? By all means, try to remember to read those prayers and those supplications, daily by day in the holy month of Ramadan, since they are full with many benefits. Now what can we do that can better assist us with the preparation? 1. Have the right intention. Try to have the right intention preparing for the holy month of Ramadan. Everything you do and every good deed you complete, make sure it's only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 2. Get yourself in the habit of tasbih. 
Are you in the habit of using swearing words? So get yourself in the habit of tasbih to avoid yourself from using bad languages. When you start performing tasbih a month before the arrival of the holy month of Ramadan, by the time the month comes, you are in the habit of reciting tasbih. Three, and lastly, Quran. Reading Quran in the month of Ramadan is 70 times greater than reciting it in any other month. So get out your Quran and start reading a chapter so that when Ramadan comes, you're used to reading a chapter every day. Taqabbal Allah wa a'malakum wa Ramadan Mubarak. Now it's nutrition and health. I have with me a NLP practitioner and life coach, Fahima Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. How are you doing, sister? You okay? Very well, thank you. Good, good, good. And yourself, brother Ben, the chef, yeah. how are you doing, sir? Very well, how are you? I'm excellent. I'm so excited. I'm looking forward to today's recipe. Um, it's been a tough fast, yes. hungry days, yes. but alhamdulillah. So um, what do you have in store for our beloved viewers? Right, so today we have a fantastic recipe. It's really simple, full of nutrients, um, really easy for people to do at home when they're feeling a bit tired, you know. Um, so it's a date and almond ball. So it's sort of like a power snack, really like sugar boost, natural sugar boost, which is really great. Uh, really simple, so only a few ingredients. Um, almonds, mm -hmm. cinnamon, vanilla, uh, almond butter, and some dates. Now, dates are really important in our religion. Mm -hmm. um, full of fantastic nutrients as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and begin the recipe. It's really great that you mentioned that, you know, we have to have dates because it has so much nutrients and it sort of, you know, gives us everything that we require. So having this sort of recipe with a difference, because normally we have dates on its own a lot of the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this yeah. would be quite interesting to see how we can actually make it a little bit more different. And I know because not everybody would actually want to have dates, even though it's got all the, you know, the sugars and the energy boost that's in there. So hopefully this could be something that we could actually try with the difference. Are there any Absolutely. particular vitamins or vitamins that uh, the dates contain that would be, I guess, yeah, more helpful has, at this time of the year? Of course, um, you know, we have all these um, nutrients that it provides with regards to sugars and fibers and it helps you with your energy. And it's actually a healthier option to most sugars generally. Mm, mm, so that's mm -hmm. what's really going to be beneficial for us today. And I have a lot of clients that come to me, you know, complaining and wanting to know like, how we're going to cope. Go ahead. Go for it. Hey, don't let us stop you. Just get this noisy bit out go of the way. Just, just go for it, babe. Just go for it. So what we want to do, we want to blitz the almonds into a, a kind of coarse uh, meal sort of thing, like a sort of cereal meal. Not too much. You don't want to find powder or anything. That's and fine. what I like about what you said is it's actually quick, simple. Really very simple. Easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really simple. So something that we could actually do in the morning, even if we're late, uh, not having to prepare before. Oh, okay. So there's no need for the cooker to go on, no oil to be heated or no, nothing of that no, nature. No. Okay. This is totally fresh. No cooking needed. I mean, cooking often um, takes away some of the essential vitamins and, and nutrients out of the, the ingredients we use. So okay. Recipes like this are fantastic for. So this is what we call a raw food, a raw, raw food diet. Yeah, yeah, food absolutely. Power. Yeah, yeah. This is it. Keeping, on, keeping, keeping all the enzymes yeah. alive. Of course, that's what I find. I find a lot of people, they want to eat healthily. They mm -hmm. want to actually, you know, benefit from Ramadan, especially yeah. having the foods that's going to fill them up for longer and give them all the benefits. But it's having the knowledge. So as a life coach, when people come to me, it's not about actually giving them health and nutrition advice, but for them to, for me to guide them to get the knowledge as to where to go with. And we usually have habits. And we normally start Ramadan without having those habits in place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we need to sort of generate these habits beforehand so that we can actually, you know, find Ramadan easy. Because a lot of us will just start Ramadan on the first day, just doing what we need to do only on the first day. Mm -hmm, but we mm -hmm. need to practice beforehand. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So what we're doing is just sort of um, blending up the dates just to break them down a little bit. And then we're going to add this amazing almond butter. So you're using raw almonds and you're using almond butter? Yes, that's double, un that double seems whammy. Different, yeah. That's yeah. it. 
Is that to give it the consistency in order to make it into the ball that you need? Yeah, it's to give it the, the texture that you want and to add richness and, and flavour at the okay. end of the day, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. So, so Fahima, what about, um, say for example, people have different, I don't know, uh, dispositions where they, you know, like spiritual maladies in terms of, uh, not anxiety in terms of mental health, but anxiety on a spiritual level. Do you ever come across people that might need some tips and pointers with their, their food intake? Is that something that can, can help in terms of your coaching? Absolutely. I mean, like I said, a lot of people are quite apprehensive and, you know, thinking that, you know, Ramadan's coming and as much as it's a spiritual month where we can benefit, mm -hmm. but the food aspect is really important. Exactly. And at the end of the day, it will help with your worship. It will help with your daily sort of dealings with regards to, you know, working and going concentration. To school, concentration, everything. So I help them with regards to gaining that extra knowledge. You know, go to the GP, check yourself out, because at the same time, we don't know ourselves and our bodies. Mm. Now, Malani is there to help us mm -hmm. to actually know ourselves better and gain better habits. You know, not just in worship, but actually our health is so important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. that will benefit us, you know, in our mind. Health our is body. wealth. Health is wealth. Absolutely. Hey Ben, don't let us stop you. You got to, you got to, you got to. This is actually tread come, on. Yes, this is coming to the final. Hey, it's, part. it's not because I'm over, over eager. No, 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 I'm just enthusiastic. It's enthusiasm. It's enthusiasm. <laughs> so this is the final blitz. Now we want to bring it all together into that um, tight consistency to form balls. Ah. If it does need a little extra uh, liquid, we can just add a little bit of water. But let's see. See it all coming together now. So you, would you say it's a fun diet for, for like, say, mums would want to prepare something sweet for children, a healthy option? Yeah, Mom, I want is, some candy, I want some chocolate. Is this a... This is fantastic is for kids. It's sweet, um, delicious, um, no added sugar, um, just natural sugars. Natural sugars. It's the fantastic. body processes them That's easier. Yeah, yeah. Especially yeah. for children. And even just the look and consistency of it. Mm -hmm. So having it in this way, it's a fun way. Definitely, and it can actually, you know, be good for you know children that are even fasting Absolutely. that would want, would, you know, would normally have dates, but they will actually have that in their diet. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you work with a lot of mums who have uh, food queries? Um, I have a variety of clients, and yes, there is the concern, of course, you know, with children, especially starting to fast, as to how they're going to cope. So having mm. the knowledge as to your body, for example, yeah. and then secondly, you know, what sort of foods out there that is going to benefit you for longer, for example, it's going to be, you know, really long days in London, in Ramadan. So you need to have something that's going to give you that extra boost and energy and keep you fuller for longer. Yeah, yeah. So there are a lot of, you know, foods out there that, you know, provide all of this if we have the knowledge to actually go out there and seek it and actually make, you know, recipes and ingredients that will help us in our uh, sort of food and daily lives. And so it's something about the motivation life. because as you said the information we're in the information age but are we motivated it? or are we actually being strategic in where we of obtain course, what, what is out there? it's not even about being motivated. I find the way in which I help people is just opening up a lens and opening up a perspective that they've never had before and never seen before. Mm -hmm. So that's what it's about and looking yeah. at things differently. And when you look at things differently instead of it being a negative you, there is an, you know, an alternative positive just with the knowledge that you can gain. So the glass is half full? Always. Absolutely, Always. absolutely. So... Hey, don't pause for too long, Ben. Don't no, no, no. <laughs> keep it, mov keep it keep moving, keep it moving, keep it moving. I've just had a check of the, uh, the consistency. Right, it right. was a little bit dry, so I did add a little bit of water. Okay. Hopefully that will bring it together. Really simple recipe, so I easy. I how simple and yeah. easy that is. Ben, that, looks, that does look good. That does look <laughs> good. And there we go. So... Now it's just a case of forming the balls. And this is pretty much ready to go. I figure this is a bit where the, the children would come in. Yes, exactly. We've the done, ideal we've for done them. the noisy bit, get the kids to yeah. do the, the messy bit. We've done the bit with the, with the blade. Adults have done the bit with the blade. So as they say, don't try this at home, children, without your parents' supervision. Of course. That's it, that's it. Now this, this mixture can be a little sticky, so I would suggest just rubbing a little bit of water on your hands that will stop the mixture from sticking and um, allow you to... Oh, like when, they used to, when you used to make uh, stuff in, in nursery and they would say, put, uh, With a you know, a little bit of flour. That's put a little it, bit of yeah. flour in your hands so it don't stick to the palms Except of that your you hands. don't want to eat that putty. You want to eat, you want to eat this. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so final, this, oh, is, wow. this is looking okay. good. Yep, yeah, yeah. Great. So, touch my water. 
Yeah, that's the thing about dates. They have that versatility. Exactly. One of my favorite, favorite dishes is sticky date pudding. Mm -hmm. not, oh, wow. not so healthy, okay. but when you're feeling yeah. a bit naughty, fantastic. Dates are, dates are an amazing ingredient. Yeah, they're, they're, they're a famous food. And as I mentioned in the Holy Quran, in the story, um, the mother of uh, Isa, Jesus, peace be, and best be upon him, you know, uh, shake the, the date tree and, yes. and you yes. will, dates will fall down upon you. So it's, yeah, mashallah, yes. Yeah. So it's good for, good for expectant mothers. Yep. It has Absolutely. so many benefits. It's actually, you know, uh, not being marketed or advertised or, you know, promoted for what, what sort it of really benefits? is. What sort of benefits? The benefits are huge with regards to, like I said, you know, when people have um, sort of, they feel like they need intake of sugar. Mm -hmm. If they feel that they need energy, if they also want to benefit with regards to just having, you know, um, a healthy way of living, yeah. you know, so that, you know, these sort of ingredients are just, you know, the basis of what you need to sort of worry about. And I think that the, the thing that you can use with dates is so versatile. Like you said, you can use with cakes. You can make it with, you know, these, these balls. You can have it on its own. It could be even as a spread. I know a lot of, especially in the Middle Eastern, when for breakfast, they have date syrup. So yeah, they have okay. that with bread, right. yes, right. and um, that's actually quite a good breakfast to have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's very sweet, uh, it tastes very sweet, and you even put, um, uh, it's, a, it's called a, sort of like the tamar hind, which is with the date syrup, Yeah. and then you mix it with bread, and that could be breakfast so, as well. So is it, you're talking about these benefits, again, is there a di difference between the benefits for male and female, like as in expectant mothers, we say, okay, she, there's a child inside of her, but is there some benefits? I want to encourage your brothers also, so they, they need to feel like there's something available. You know, with health, available. it's obviously for both, you know, for yeah. humans. Mm -hmm. I don't ever differentiate between gender when it comes to that. Obviously with, you know, pregnancy and things like that, there are, you know, like... There's, there's acids, differences, needed, yeah. There's yeah, differences yeah that's needed there's extra nutrients and health you know that's required but again um, it's again you know knowing where you are and what stage you are and knowing your body as to what it is because mm -hmm. a lot of times we have people I have clients come to me I don't know why I'm you know dieting and it doesn't work for me because we don't know ourselves we need to, you know what do you think about that word dieting I think it's. Um, I think it's. It's is it, over. Is it loaded? Is it a bit of a loaded word? People think of diet and they think, oh, this is regimental. Exactly. It's going to take away the fun. No, it is because it's the way in which it's you a negative look at spin. It. Because every diet, every you know, is not going to work for you. What it is going to work for me? Yeah. So you have to know your body. I encourage people to go and check, to, you know, themselves the GP, especially you know when it comes to time of Ramadan, because they it will encourage them to understand themselves, their health. And then mm -hmm. it will understand what is it that, you know, their body requires in particular. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. what it is. And it's the same for dieting. The you know, one diet the is not going to work for everybody. It's consistency. So it, wait a Ben, 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 yes. Ben, Ben. This looks marvelous. This looks excellent. Yeah. Um, it's... Uh, can it be decorated with anything, or is it this a, is this a finished item? Well, very let's versatile. expand. Let's expand a little bit. Very versatile. I mean, you can customize it your own way, add different fruit. Mm -hmm. More fruit, more dried fruit, cranberries, dried apricots would be amazing. Um, also, you can you can coat it in different things. Like, why not coat it in more almonds? Um, add some chocolate nibs or something. Ooh. You know. Have Be you got like a bit of a sticky consistency so that it'd be easy to coat? Yeah, I mean, you could. Or you add water to it in no, order no, to that's the coating. You this could you could add nuts straight onto that and okay. it, and they will, okay. they will hold. Okay, okay Fahima, ladies before gentlemen. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Go for Let me try. it. Hope you enjoy it, guys. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Mm. It's dates like I've never had before. Mm. It's different, but it's something really familiar. Nice. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the key. Mm. I like the crunch, the sweetness, because I do like dates. I'll be honest with you, mm. I do like dates. You um, got a sweet tooth? Yeah, and it helps me to avoid the sugars, the, the is, actual uh, simple sugars, which are not that good for you. Exactly, and even though it's sweet, it's not too sweet. Yeah, not overpowering. Like. It's really mm -hmm. nice in mm -hmm. that sense. Yeah, yeah. Full of so, nutrients, full of uh, just fantastic ingredients that are um, mm -hmm. really going to sustain you over the, the Ramadan period. I mean, almonds, high in calcium, all those sort of great stuff, good for bones, you know. It's going to really okay. do a good job on your body. Excellent, excellent. Female, take away message before we finish up. Well, Been I a would pleasure. say um, generally, Definitely use dates as an ingredient for whatever it is that you want to use because it is very versatile yeah. and you can actually use it for a lot of ingredients. And this is one great recipe which is easy, quick, and it will definitely be perfect for you know fasting during Ramadan. So hopefully we can actually use this 
and you know you can obviously add to it like you said and it will be brilliant for you excellent excellent it's been great guys it's thank been you. great thank, thank you, you both thank me. you both and next up we have ramadan etiquette with sister masuma jaffa ramadan preparations Wow, Brother Blah, that's quite amazing, those date nut rounds. And inshallah, definitely be trying them, and I hope the viewers will be too. And thank you to your guests, Sister Fahima and Brother Ben. And now we're going to be discussing our Ramadan etiquettes. And uh, we're very privileged and honoured to have our guest, um, Sister Masuma. Asalaamu Alaikum and welcome. Wa Alaikum Asalaamu Wa Rahmatullah. Thank you. How are you? Alhamdulillah, thank good, you. Good, good. So this beautiful month is, um, has fast approached, and um, there's so many hadith and Quran. Um, references to this holy month of um, instructing us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this opportunity. Um, so for people that are preparing now, we're in the beginning of this beautiful month, how best is it to sort of think ahead of the month and how mm -hmm. best to sort of be able to make the most of this um, this holy month? What would your suggestions be? And I think first and foremost, um, I would suggest that we change our mindset. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people stress a lot about the month, especially at the beginning of the month. Mm -hmm. um, they worry whether they'll be able to keep the whole fast, you know, the, the, the whole month's fast. Um, they worry whether they're going to get thirsty, how it's going to be, is it going to be really hot? Um, and again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the, in the Holy Quran, in Surah Baqarah, uh, verse 185 he tells us that he does not he wants ease for us he does mm -hmm. not want difficulty for us so by repeating it um, he's showing us that it is actually easy it's, mm -hmm. it's like me telling you um, you know I want the food to taste good I don't want the food to taste bad so I don't need to repeat it if I've said I want it to taste good that's it so he could have just said I want ease for you but the fact that he says he does not want difficulty for mm -hmm. us um, showing that it is something that he's going to make it make easy for us. And there's lots of different ways that this ease can come in. So the fact that the fast is much easier in, in the month of Ramadan sure. than in, in, in any other months. The fact that um, we're told that shaitan is locked up, so yeah. it's much easier than to get on that spiritual high and try yeah. to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and the blessings and the barakah that are coming down on mm. this in month, on this holy month, makes it easier as well. Okay. So I think the first and foremost advice I would give is let's change our mindset and not worry about the fasts. Um, let's do the best we can and just leave it up to Allah. Allah, He will take care of us. Yeah. And I think you're absolutely right. It's such a critical point is that if we start any task and you know, and, and obviously this is such a, um, a blessed month that we are positive and thinking that uh, we will be okay because Allah has blessed us exactly as you say in those references that he's made it easy for us, mm. he will make it easy, that trust in him and think everything will be we'll okay find, yeah. and inshallah and will we will hopefully sail through this yeah. holy month. Um, and then I think it, once we've got that mindset mm -hmm. then it's much easier to think about okay what is it that I want out of this month. Right. Um, and again when we're thinking about what we want we should be looking at what the month is there for, what should the outcome be. Yeah. So it's not about me losing weight, it's not about me getting healthier, It's all of these are benefits, but yeah. that's not the purpose. No. The purpose is, like Allah says in again Surah Baqarah, verse 183, He says, So that you may get taqwa. Mm. Again, it's not that I'm going to fast and I'm going to get it. It's not a certainty. It's not that right. It's, you know, if I do it correctly with the right mindset, um, not just staying hungry and thirsty, but actually fasting with my whole body, then inshallah, I will get taqwa. So that effort that you put in. Yeah then Allah will reward that. So exactly. it's like reaching out with your hand and Allah will... Yes, and we only have to reach out a little bit and Allah will do the rest of it. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's just making that effort, but ensuring that I'm not just concentrating on the body where yeah. I'm just thinking about the hunger and the thirst, mm. but I'm concentrating on the spirituality. So how so. would you split that? So you're obviously thinking about suhoor, you're thinking about eating, and you need to be healthy, you need the long day hours. And then combining that with the spiritual needs, how would you sort of split the two and, or would you combine them and say... Yeah, I'd, I'd combine them because it's, it's when I refrain from sin with my whole body, mm -hmm. then I can actually spiritually elevate in this month. So when I'm thinking of fasting, I'm not just thinking about fasting from food and water, but yeah. I'm thinking about fasting from all kinds of sins. So ensuring that I'm not saying anything that could be considered a sin, like lying or giba or anything mm -hmm. like that. I'm not hearing anything that's a sin. I'm not going towards any th in the sins, I'm not hurting anyone with my hands. So it's fasting with my whole body in order that my soul then can elevate towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so 
physically, obviously, we're restraining from food. Mm. What's the impact on the soul when you're, you know, you're not eating and, you know, how is the balance sort of like the elevation? So we're refraining from the same, but how will that benefit our sort of... Well, if, if you think of us as being um, made up of two aspects, so mm -hmm. we've got the physical body and the spiritual soul, okay? Now, because we live in the physical world, we're constantly thinking of our physical body mm. because that's the one that we connect to. The desires, the needs. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so we can't, you know, our physical body is constantly telling us, "I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, yeah. I'm tired," I'm, and, we're, and we're, you know, uh, fulfilling the needs of the physical body. Whereas the soul is the thing that is who I am. The yeah. soul is the is is who is going to continue to the next realm. Mm -hmm. The physical body will be left behind. Um, so God, out of His love and mercy, has given us the month of Ramadan in order for me to now connect to my soul because I can't take care of the needs of the body. I, if my body's screaming, I'm hungry, I have to ignore it. It's screaming, I'm thirsty, I have to ignore it. So I can actually then focus on the soul. Yeah. It's like, if I can give you an example, <coughs> it's like if you have twins, okay, and you have one loud child mm. and one quiet child. And generally, you know, when it comes to food time, the loud child's screaming, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, mm. I'm hungry, I'm hungry, and it gets louder and louder and louder. Although you want to feed the quiet child because all you can hear is the loud child, yeah. you're going to feed the loud child. And the loud child will play up and you're, you know, it'll take you a long time. By the time you've got the loud child fed, you haven't got any time or energy yeah. for the quiet child. Yeah. So you'll do the bare minimum. Yeah. Now, imagine if I came along and I said to you, okay, let me take the loud child away for a day mm. and just leave you with the quiet child. So you get time to actually spend with the quiet child. You feed it, you talk to him and you, you, know, and, and you realize <laughs> And you realize the potential this mm. quiet child has. Mm. So when I bring the loud child back, now you are driven to actually spend time with the quiet child because you've seen the potential. Same sort of principle. God makes us forget our loud body that's right. constantly screaming yeah. so that we can actually concentrate on the soul yeah. and see the potential of our own souls. So that after the month is over and the body comes back, where we now are taking care of the body mm. the whole day as well, we will still concentrate on the soul because we've seen the potential of our soul. Absolutely. And it's really yeah. beautiful how he does that. You know, it's, 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 it's such a subtle way, mm. but it really helps me connect to my soul. Mm. And the more I connect to my soul, the more I, st stronger my soul gets. And the body may be getting weaker, but the soul is getting stronger and stronger. Yeah. That light is, is, is shining on that soul, isn't it? And yeah. It's elevating. So, in terms of that bodily function, so when we're, like you said, we're in, in our day-to-day, -day, we're just so busy, you know, fulfilling our desires mm. and saying, you know, I need to eat, I can just pick up the food. And, um, and then it's so beautiful how you said that it's the soul that needs to elevate and come out and, and shine through this month. So, yeah. inshallah, if that's something we feel towards the end of the month, then we've, inshallah, done a good, yeah. we've got to that sort of where you're saying the outcome. And, and that's where one of the measurements is, I guess, then, right? Yeah, so that exactly. So the, the taqwa is your God consciousness, yeah. you being aware of Allah in every aspect of your life. So again, um, you know, I think as mothers, we, we find it very difficult in this yeah. holy month because we feel like we should be, you know, reciting the Holy Quran. We, should, we feel like we should be doing this du'a and that du'a and, and praying this du'a. And, and, and because we have children and we have the housework to do and, you know, the, the cooking and all yeah. of that, we feel like we're being torn apart. Yeah. And I think, um, and I, I, a lot of young mothers, I've, I've got yeah. friends with young children. They say, "Sarah, we just don't feel that we're actually benefiting." And and, and you, have, you know, you try to give them that encouragement that you know your children are the ibadah. It's not exactly. one or the other, is it? Exactly. So it's and I think that that's important to remember. So I think yeah. it's really, really important to remember that as long as whatever I'm doing in this month, if I can do it with the correct niyyah, yeah. then it is ibadah. Yeah. And the correct niyyah means that I'm doing it for the pleasure of Allah and in the way he tells me to do it. Yeah. So both have to go hand in hand. Yeah. It's not just doing it for his pleasure, but doing it in the way he tells me yeah. to do it. Beautiful, absolutely. So, you know, even when I'm taking care of my children, yeah. if I'm, bringing, if I'm doing, taking care of my children for the pleasure of Allah, and I'm doing it in the way he wants me to do it, then that is ibadah as well. Yeah. So, in ter when, I mean, even when you're with, um, so it's, like we were saying, the fasting is the whole body, isn't it? And mm. it's the senses with it. So when you're fasting and you have children or you have parents to take care of mm. or com other commitments, jobs, and um, etc. Um, 
you can maintain our silence as well, can't we? And even in that, even though we're taking care of others or you know responsibilities, then we can still do the vicar of Allah, can't yeah. we? Yeah. Um, exactly. And also, while we're taking care of our relatives, then perhaps refraining from the talking and just thinking about Allah, it, it would still count the same. Yes. I mean, there's there's lots of things you can do, like you're yeah. saying, vicar. Um, again, fasting helps you be more God conscious because. Mm -hmm. As you feel the hunger, you remind yourself, why are you hungry? Mm. And then that reminds you of the fact that you are doing a wajibat. Yeah. You know, you're, you're fulfilling a wajibat. You're fulfilling an obligation that God has put on you. So it reminds you of God in wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Yeah. And that reminder in itself is zikr. Mm. So, you know, it's, it's, it's beautiful, again, that we don't necessarily have to be on the, on the you know, the musalla. You don't have to be on the prayer mat. Yeah. You can be doing ibadah in all aspects of your life because, okay, we've talk, we're talking about mothers, but there are then again, the the fathers yes. have to go out to work yes. and they're working the whole day. So yeah. again, how do they then, you know, make sure that they're getting the most of my Ramzan? It's just being aware um, of Allah, mm -hmm. being that you know having that God consciousness, whether it is from you know saying zikr all the time or just thinking about Allah, thinking about. Um, what I want out of this mm. month, thinking about, I think a lot of self-reflection should happen in this mm. month. You know, I should be thinking about where I am, where I should be, and how do I get from where I am to where I should be. Okay. So in terms of, so somebody who's starting this month, what tips would you give, because we're coming towards the end of, the, um, um, of this morning, um, how would you say, they, what would they start, key points that you think? Okay, good so recommendations. maybe I can bring in the hadith of, of um, Imam Raza al-Islam where he says, um, where he talks about the month, and he says, first and foremost, forgiveness. Right. Okay, so okay. ensure that you, you gain the forgiveness that is available here. Yeah. And again, it, there's no point asking for a general forgiveness. You need to be very specific. Mm -hmm. So self-reflection is really, really important. Excellent. Where okay. I'm actually thinking about what I'm asking for forgiveness for, mm -hmm. ensuring that I'm not gonna go down that road again, mm -hmm. make sure that I don't commit those sins again. So that's a sincere forgiveness. So you say for forgiveness from Allah, and then how about each other. Yeah, so it's righting the wrong. Right. So even when I've hurt someone else, yeah. the f first and foremost, I ask, I need to ask God's forgiveness because it's His creation that yeah. I've hurt, it's His laws that I've gone against. Yeah. And then ensuring that I go and ask the forgiveness of the person who I've hurt. If there is a kaza on me, like if I haven't been praying Fajr or yeah. if I haven't done something, mm -hmm. then again, righting that wrong. Um, if there is a wajibat that I'm not doing, mm -hmm. for example, if I'm not wearing hijab, um, this is the month where I can change. Yeah. You know, this is the fact that God has given me this month to self-reflect. Yeah. It's a beautiful opportunity to, to better myself, yeah. to ensure that I'm, you know, not only am I asking for forgiveness, but I'm moving past that, that wrong that I've done. Um, the other thing Imam Ruzal Islam says is that um, do not enter this month um, with um, hatred towards another mu'min. Mm. So ensuring that I've sorted out my relationships you know, that, that Sila Ram, that concept of family, yes. my community, there should not be another Mu'min that I hate. Yeah. Um, I may dislike actions of another mm. Mu'min, but I cannot hate another mm. Mu'min. That's really, really important. Mm. So there's a lot of um, concept of the Ummah, concept of, you know, like... Um, togetherness. Togetherness, Unity. exactly, yeah. yeah. So, you know, breaking the fast together, um, inviting people to your homes, going to the mosque think, together. I mean, we're lucky, we're fortunate, most of us, where we live in communities. And those people who don't have a community, would you say even inviting a neighbor who's not a Muslim, would that be a good way for them to share yes, their Yes, of course. Of, um, yeah. Again, it, I not mean, only would you be, because we're all God's creation. Mm. So, you know, not only are you sort of um, sh sharing, um, you know, your food with someone else, though you've been mm. fasting the whole day, but that would be amazing, the mm bleak, -hmm. amazing that way, you know, where you're actually showing the other person the akhlaq of another, of, of a Muslim. Yeah. This is how beautiful. we're meant to behave. Yeah. So, so yeah, it yeah. would be beautiful. And so for, is it forgiveness, um, writing a self-reflection, um, building a community, yeah. unity, what else would you say? Preparing for the big nights. I think, you right. know, before we know it, the, the you know, Laylatul Qad comes along yeah. and we're not prepared. Mm. So actually thinking about what I want from Laylatul Qad, mm. looking at the amals from beforehand. So the three surahs that we're recommended to recite, Surah um, uh, Rum, Surah mm. Ankabut, Surah Dukhan, actually looking at them. Surah Qadr, again, looking at the whole of Surah Qadr, looking at the tafsir of Surah Qadr to actually understand Laylatul Qadr a little bit deeper. Yeah. Um, 
looking at the, the du'as, the, you know, we have like amazing du'as which are recommended throughout the mm. whole month, but specifically on Laylatul Qadr as well. Mm. So it's really, really important that I understand du'as. Again, there's no point reciting a du'a in Arabic when I don't understand what I'm saying. Yeah. So it's really important that I understand what I'm, because du'a is when you're asking Allah for something. Yeah. It's not like Quran. Quran should be recited in Arabic, whereas a du'a should be understood. Mm. So Touch even your heart. Yeah. yeah. And, and if you're asking God for something and He gives it to you, and you don't know what you've asked Him for, you won't even know you've got it. Yeah. Which make you know. So yeah. it makes no sense Definitely. to actually recite a du'a like a tick box exercise where you're just reciting it, but you have no idea what you're saying. Mm. So either res you know ensure that I know the translation of it so when I'm reciting the Arabic I know the translation. obviously the words are from the Ahima so they're yeah. beautiful words so it's better to recite it in Arabic yeah. but I need to know what I'm asking for yeah. so actually looking at the translations from beforehand um, you know the Dua'i Makarum al akhlaq which actually is I think the roadway and how to become a Muslim mm. a Shia you mm. know it, it just mm. it explains it Absolutely. so beautifully do I Tawbah, again, how, to, you know, that so concept. Many, there are so, so many. many, you know, do I Joshua and Kabir, again, you know, invoking God through all his different names. It's, it, there are so many different du'as. And the du'a iftata that we're reciting every single night mm -hmm. and all the small du'as. It's, it's important to know the translation of these. So even if you've got time just for that one du'a and it's small, but understanding yeah. and asking from your heart, that's, it's, it's a place to start for those exactly. that are very busy lives. Yeah, lives. exactly. It's just literally ensuring that, you know, I take 10 minutes out of my day mm -hmm. and knowing what I want to do in that 10 minutes. Yeah. I think it's about organizing myself. Definitely. A lot of the times it's like, you know, we come home and we're tired and then we, you know, we go to mosque every night maybe or, you yeah. know, we're, we're busy sort of waiting for iftar time and then, you know, suhoor time and it, it just, just passes. Exactly. Does, yeah. So I think it's just organizing myself and I'm not, you know, it doesn't have to be hours and hours, even 10 minutes. Yeah of just, okay, today I'm going to look at this du'a. Wow, that's just so brilliant and beautiful um, advice. And inshallah, we will all benefit. And um, please do keep us in your du'as. Inshallah, you too, please. And uh, thank you so much. Um, inshallah, we'll benefit more in um, future programs. Um, and right now we have um, QT Abbas, and he's going to give us daily hadith. And thereafter, we have um, thick questions answered. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Abbas and I'm here to bring you the daily hadith from Ahlul Bay, peace be upon them. Today's hadith is all about Ramadan. Why is it called Ramadan? What does Ramadan mean? The Holy Prophet, peace be upon them and his family, says surely the month of Ramadan has been named Ramadan because it scorches away the sins. So Ramadan is a month in which our sins can be forgiven. So we should use the time wisely to do good stuff, not bad stuff. Because if we do, no one knows what will happen. See you next time, inshallah. Morning, Barakas. Fik, your questions answered. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyid. Uh, good to see you today. Alaikum assalam. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Always a pleasure. Here we are. At this time, this time period, we have some interesting questions. Isn't that right, Zara? We have a few... I'm, I'm just queries. wondering where your energy is from. You must have had a good iftar, healthy, mashallah. Alhamdulillah, always a High in sugar. blessing of um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fruit and yogurt, that's what I like to eat in the evening. Good. Really? Good. Indeed. So do you have a proper meal at Sahur? I try to, but my mom makes paratas and stuff. A bit heavy for me. <laughs> Fruit we can't and miss your mom's paratas. You've been, spoil. yeah, exactly. been spoiled, you've been spoiled. <laughs> well, welcome to this um, season. Thank you for having me. This the Ramadan month. season. Indeed, indeed, the blessed month. Inshallah. So we have um, questions from uh, our viewers. Um, and today's um, discussion is um, from a mother, a concerned mother from the UK. She says, Salaam Alaikum. Alaikum I have a child who is Balag and has Asperger's. He has difficulty concentrating at the best of times. Currently, he is preparing for his exams, which are very important. Um, I was wondering, due to his disabilities, can we postpone his fast during the exam period? And can he make the fast up after the month? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Let's, let's uh, tackle this issue first with the exam side, then with the, uh, the mental condition. For the, for the youth out there that want to actually, um, you have got exams coming up, and think that they may be excused from uh, fasting this month mm -hmm. because of exams, I'm afraid you're not. <laughs> And you have to fulfill your uh, duty and, your, and the fast is obligatory upon them. Uh, so, yes, exam time is not an excuse and, and it w you cannot be excused from 
uh, fasting. Now, moving on to the mental condition. Because the neurologic, that's a specific neurological condition. Asperger is a type of autism. Indeed. Indeed. Depending on the severity and depending on... Because the main thing is this. There are people who do have, um, you know, um, mental conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's ADHD or um, global delay or, um, you know, uh, behavioral issues. If they can distinguish between right and wrong, then the ahkam laws apply. If they can't, then they are excused and the ahkam laws don't apply to them because mm -hmm. they can't make um, decisions based on of clear conscience, if you know what I'm so trying to say. Can we use that term like uh, what they use when they're talking about people who, for example, have mental health problems or, or older people who have, um, for example, Alzheimer's, they say they lack capacity. Indeed. To make decisions on their own behalf because they, 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 the mental problems are, are so severe. Indeed. Right. Indeed. So f they are excused. But um, someone has like ADHD, which is you know, just being hyperactive and, and it's like an attention disorder, they, they can still, uh, have, they still have the mental capacity and, you know, to function as a, as a normal person. It's just that they just want more attention or, or you know, they, they just have so much energy in them. That doesn't, um, you know, qualify yourself to be excused from fasting. Mm -hmm. uh, it what, what if um, um, a student is very, you know, not, I mean, a lot of children right now are taking GCSEs, A-levels, and perhaps not at the peak of their sort of growth, and they perhaps on the weaker side of growth, um, and they get weak because of fasting, they feel get unwell, um, although we know that fasting has its spiritual benefits, physical benefits, but perhaps they need to have regular meals to keep their concentration. Would they be excused at any point? Okay, if, if, it's, if we're talking about concentration, then no. Mm -hmm. uh, performance-based. Perf yeah, performance-based, no, because we, we, we all know that during Ramadan, our performance does dip, our concentration does dip, because of the lack of vitamins and dehydration and so forth. But this is part of fasting. This mm. is what it's about. It's to make you feel the hunger and thirst of those you know, who go without mm. and those who, who cannot afford or those who are in, in, in you know, what worse are, status than yourself yeah yeah so it's that, that's, that's the whole purpose of ramadan um it's just to feel that now with 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 the youth if they are getting ill then this is an excuse right because depending on the illness some people they need food it's the blood sugar levels are so low that they collapse unconsciousness is one of the um you could say one, one of the terms that um which uh Don't prohibit you sorry, sorry, let me say again so if losing consciousness. Eating, yeah, if someone's eating, I mean, with, with lack of sugar and losing consciousness. Yeah, well. So okay. So if we have a, an individual who, because of lack of food and nutrition in the body, collapses due to l low sugar and goes unconscious. Okay, their fast is void. Hmm. Losing unconsciousness. Losing consciousness is losing, breaks fast. It does. Losing consciousness breaks fast, according to the Grand Maharaja. Uh, the Grand Ayatollah says Sadiq Shirazi, it is it is void. Um, you know you are allowed to uh, eat and drink something to get your health back, but it, it's, it's clear that the the fast is uh, is taking its turn on you. Yeah. So in those situations, in those cases, yes, for the young, for the youth, for young uh, people who maybe their body is not as developed to do such long fasts, um, if it does take a turn on their health, mm -hmm. then th there is uh, an option uh, for them to break their fast, eat a little, not to, to fill themselves up and carry on like a normal day, no, just eat a little and, and just to carry on throughout the day. And you can make that fast up later on for the next Ramadan. And then would you suggest um, perhaps the next day to take a break or something that they could monitor their That health? depends on the doctor. Hmm. Um, you mean, you should, uh, I would uh -huh. say go see your doctor and ask your doctor. I mean, if, you, if they say, oh, it was just a one-off or do you know what, start introducing more sugar hmm. into your diet. Uh, and more nutrition, uh, you know, when you are allowed to eat, then maybe uh, you know you, it won't happen again. So if, a, if okay, so they can, can get an iftar meal plan yeah. that could facilitate a better slow carbohydrate release or exactly. blood sugar release or something like this, that might still make the fast possible. So you're talking about being quite informed by medical decisions. Yes. Depending on how the rulings would then apply based on, on, on secular medical conditions. Yes. And I think, I think this is where also um, meal planning, you talk about meal plans, that it's important to ensure that the children have the nutrients that they need and drink plenty and plenty of water at plenty. that time that Definitely. we can because mm -hmm. I think your body, your body will end up um, suffering, won't it? The, um, Definitely. As, as the long fasts are settling and maybe we'll get a heat wave. 
Indeed. as we do in the UK. Mm -hmm. it's yes, it's, it's a very important mm -hmm. to, stay, to keep hydrated. I think hydration yeah. is That's the, the most, most important, important key. Yeah. Yeah. Especially with, with the long fast and the heat. We, don't, we, don't, no. we sweat at least two, three litres of, of, of water out of our body during the day. So we, we need to make sure Things we're like replenishing. Things like watermelon, cucumbers. I mean, I don't exactly. know what else Brother Bilal you would yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but you're right. Water. Things that like, things like cucumbers are, are some of the best because yeah. drinking water is good, but you also need to eat foods which yes. are high in water content. Mm -hmm. You know, um, balonji garden, what they call garden eggs and cucumbers and things like that. Yeah. But melon, melons are super food yeah. as well. Yeah. 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 We were joking at the beginning, you know, bratas and you know all yes. these lovely samosas. But at the end, we have food. such a you know critical time as a short time to eat that the children need their sort of energy and anybody actually working exactly. going yeah. through the day so a um, long day is a long day for everyone yes indeed um but as we're talking about health um concerns um i know in the uk we've, we've published through medical experts saying about you know not fasting if you've got um certain chronic diseases like you know diabetes you could be prone to certain infections yes. like urine infections and things um and to monitor your health but what about those people and i know GP friends of mine, general practitioner friends of mine that have said they have Muslims coming and saying, yes, but you know what? I want to fast because it's what I want. I, it's my obedience to Allah that um, doesn't matter if I've got, um, you know, kidney disease. It doesn't matter if I've got um, diabetes. I'm going to fast. As, as fiqh, would you please explain? Fiqh so. wise, the person with the illness who knows that fasting will cause a, a detrimental effect. They're fully aware of that. Worsen the condition. Yeah. Should opt out of fasting because Islam is a religion of peace and ease. We're not here to medically make you worse. We're here to medically benefit you. Mm. Fasting will not benefit. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're talking with someone with, uh, with, with a kidney issue. That uh, A very common issue is gastritis or stomach ulcers uh, where a long fast will cause it to, to worsen. Mm -hmm due to the acidity uh, levels increasing and, and they're also getting worse. So we may like put another time a year when the days are much shorter, for example? It will be, will be a lot easier, but I'm sure someone who's got a stomach ulcer with a 19 hour fast, if those are fasting 19 hours up to 19 and a half hours, I'm sure a doctor would say to them, mm. this will not help, it would actually worsen <laughs> yeah. your condition. Yeah. You, you, you can't do this. Now, if that person insists that, no, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Because there will be some that feel that God way. God help them. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not here to say that, oh, your fast will be accepted. I'm not here to say your fast won't be accepted. I'm here to tell you that from an Ahkam point of view, your doctor has told you that this will worsen your condition. Opt out. You're supposed to adhere to the advice, the medical Opt advice of the out. experts. Yes. You are allowed to people, make up for that later Because on. people will struggle. I mean, I, I've known a brother that has been ill in Ramadan because he had an operation and, you know, he was very upset as, as, as the month was approaching. And... I said to him, what's the fuss? Because Islam is, as mm. you said, you know, it, it wishes us ease. So the doctors are saying you need certain injections, you need to take certain medication. It's not going to work out for you. Fasting is a bad idea. And he said, but who wants to fast alone? So the idea of having to make up the... the people feel like they're missing out because they know Ramadan is a gift and fasting with the believers is different from making well, up the fast. You don't, need to, you don't need to disassociate yourself and, and, and you know remove yourself from the community you can still enjoy in, in the festivities yeah. we could say yeah you can still go down to the mosque still do the, the abad the amal the exactly yeah, spirituality if, if you're not fasting why not help serve the iftar why not sponsor the iftar um if you've got more energy why not you know maybe there's some people who are finding the fast difficult when you ask them is there anything i can do for you i'm not fasting because of my medical condition so i have energy you know maybe you need pick up kids from school or something or take so there's still a chance to reap some extra yeah, rewards exactly, exactly. But i think i think the critical done. point that people miss um in that attitude and i know you know if, if there's years that you can't fast absolutely you feel like you're not be, you're, maybe mm -hmm. you're not blessed that you're not getting the blessing that Allah has given on this month but the critical point is that if Allah is saying it's against your health if you are healthy fast and if you're not healthy surely the reward is in the obedience to what Allah is saying if he's saying to us fast because you're healthy that's the obedience and the reward we get yeah the fast and dictates you you don't dictate the fast but the, f the emotional connection with Ramadan. but that's it if you give your sort of your belief and trust in Allah that he's saying my health isn't okay and I can't fast then he will reward you equally to a person who's fasting because the cr critical point is the obedience so whether Indeed. we're not fasting because Eric, we're using exams as an excuse or something else as an excuse the point is it's Allah's 
command upon us, fast. So if we're not able to fast, it's not due to our, you know, choice. We're yeah. saying, I'm submitting to Allah's will. I'm not fasting because he has said, No, indeed, my indeed. The believers are those who say they hear and they obey, right? Yeah. They hear what Allah has commanded and they obey. And I think if we change our thinking, we'd actually not feel as bad that we're missing the fast because, again, it's an obedience to Allah's command that we're not fasting. Mm -hmm. So, and it is really... Furthermore, I wanted to say that, you know, when we go traveling during Ramadan, you're not allowed to fast. And some people might say, oh, I'm just going to keep the fast while mm. I travel. I can do it, I can let. You have to make that fast back. What, what is the ruling? Is what is the ruling? You have to make that one back. Said, what is the ruling if you're traveling for a certain period of time? Does it change the dynamics? Like if I'm going to travel abroad for over 10 days? Is it, is it's, it, the same, it's the same as when we have a Qasr prayer. Okay. You have the, you have the, the nine, 10 day uh, gap depending on the marja. It's normally 10 days. Yeah. So if you're going to be in a, in a situation, in a place for less than 10 days, you don't fast. You have to make them up. Yes. Uh, before the next Ramadan. If you're there for longer than 10 days, then you have to fast. But the day you travel, you don't fast on that day. Yeah. So the first, you know, so while you're traveling, you don't fast on that day. But when you arrive, mm -hmm. then you, you know, you'll start. It doesn't matter if you leave after Zohar, the day you're um, traveling. It does indeed, depending on, on the time. If time, you leave after time factor, yeah. If you leave before Zohar and you arrive at your destination before Zohar as well, then you have to continue your fast. Uh, but if you um, leave before Zohar and you arrive after Zohar, then you have to open your fast. Wow. Can I if you leave after Doha, then you have to continue your fast. Mm. Can I quickly ask you, we don't have much time, literally under in a minute, but um, about people who deliberately fast and go on holidays. Yes. Quickly. <laughs> is that a good idea? It, it, it is makru to run away from fasting. It is makru to, to, to run away from fasting. However, it is not haram. Mm -hmm. So in the summertime, for those of you who've got, you know, 30 days off work or something, Australia sounds pretty nice because <laughs> it's their winter time. Uh, go for 30 days and you can do your whole Ramadan over there okay. and come back. But obviously, the days you're traveling, you'd have to make that up mm -hmm. depending on what time you left. <laughs> As you mentioned. Yes. Oh, yes. Thank you so Thanks. much. Thanks. No worries. Um, really no. interesting. Yep. Food, for, food for thought. Mm. <laughs> Inshallah. Inshallah, another morning we'll see you. Thank you, Sayyid. Thank and you inshallah, you have a blessed uh, inshallah, fast. Inshallah, you too. Inshallah, thank you. And uh, that's all we have time for this morning. Enjoy the rest of your suhoor and may you have a blessed uh, fast as well.